Hello and thank you for joining us on the midweek edition of Journey the Standout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, Nigeria Army seeks assistance of retired military officers as Chief of Defense Staff speaks on bandits' attack on NDA. Gunmen attack just north again, kill 36 persons, and later on the show, leadership crisis rocking PDP deepens as two factional chairmen emerge. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoju and Tunde Abaton. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. Expectedly, the attack on the residential quarters of the Nigerian Defense Academy, NDA, Kaduna, is eliciting various reactions. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, described the attack as more of criminal activities associated with the normal banditry action. General Irabo, who spoke at the Chief of Defense Staff interactive session with retired senior military officers in the Northeast, sought the cooperation and assistance in tackling insecurity. Let's share the story with you. The military is thinking inward to end security challenges confronting the nation. The challenges range from banditry, kidnapping and insurgency. This security meeting at the 23 Armored Brigade Yola is called at the instance of Chief of Defense Staff with retired military officers. It is coming at a time the Nigeria Defense Academy was attacked by bandits leaving two officers killed and others injured while the fate of an officer that was abducted is yet to be ascertained. It is an incident that has sent shockwaves through the country. General Irabo is meeting with these retired military officers to tap from their experiences in overcoming the myriads of security challenges confronting the nation. The Chief of Defense Staff describes them as men of honor and unquestionable integrity who have given their best in service to their fatherland. Here, looking up to you to speak to us very frankly on issues that you believe that we have not actually viewed in the manner that your perspective will manifest. Actions that we've taken that may not have the right. He acknowledges concerns over the attack on the Nigeria Defense Academy, but assures that the excesses of the bandits will soon be brought to an end. He urges Nigerians not to lose confidence in the military. I think Kaduna is, um, yes, of course, been undertaken by bandits, but of course, it's more of Nam robber coming to your house. The infiltration didn't come by virtue of the normal banditry action. But these are things we're already looking at, and uh, in due course, you get the details. But suffice to say that, of course, every, any form of insecurity is a cause for worry for anyone. And that's why, for us, we'll be more determined that this madness will be brought to an end very speedily. The brigade commander of 23 Armored Brigade Yola, Brigadier General Aminu Garba, who represented the GOC 3 Division JAWS, Major General A.I. Sani, believes this interaction was apt and timely. He noted that the Army will surely benefit from the wealth of experience of the retired officers in addressing the region's insecurity in the region. I must commend the 18 and, of course, the Defense Headquarters for this laudable initiative of tapping on the wealth of experience of the retired military officers. Some retired military officers shared their views on the meeting. We are here to discuss on the effect of small arms that are being proliferated in the zone. The intervention and experiences of retired officers like this will inject fresh ideas into the fight against Boko Haram insurgency in the region. Babajide, what started like um, the, big, the, the story is getting bigger than we, that we, we envisage that this is going to be a big story. Yesterday we, we talked on it and Nigerians are still reacting to the audacious attack 
on that Nigerian Defense Academy quarters and is like a slap, a big slap on the face of the Nigerian military. It's a big slap on Nigeria as a country, not just the military. Because for any self-respecting Nigeria, this is not the kind of news that we want to read about. We want to be able to say, look, our armed forces are capable of protecting us and protecting us competently. But if they can't even protect themselves, then people will start wondering whether they can protect them. I mean, this is not about emotions. It's about saying the truth. It's about being concerned for our nation. How much longer are we going to continue to take the nonsense that the bandits are doing? How much longer? Bandits now think that, look, it, it, it gives them joy to, to kidnap soldiers. It's not the first time that soldiers will be kidnapped. That one, they've kidnapped soldiers many times. Uh, in Adama State, they kidnapped a DPO now. So it's not that, look, it's strange. But to go outside of the Northeast, the only place where it is on record that an army barrack was sacked was in Niger State. But in the Northwest, we've not heard that an army barracks, a military formation like uh, like uh, uh, the NDA, will be will be breached by by bandits. Yes, bandits will sometimes attack soldiers on their way to uh, the location. They've done that even in the Brinenguari area. They've killed soldiers, you know kill soldiers in their sleep. But to go and to enter a military facility in a town or in a state where we have so many military formations, mm -hmm. it makes you ask yourself that, okay, at the end of the day, we have all of those military formations. Is it that they cannot even protect people? They can't protect themselves? That's the question. Because the day that bandits attacked um, Marabanjos, Marabanjos is the last town just before you enter Kaduna. The old toll gate of Kaduna is just after Marabanjos. If you are familiar with Kaduna, I know you've gone there before, but I don't know how, how long you stayed there. You know, I remember one time when you went there. <laughs> Without planning it, you went there. On the, no, but... I said that, I said, it means they are coming closer. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm sure, as usual, many people will say, oh, Jide has come with his trouble again. You know, this is what he likes to say. He doesn't like the army. Absolute rubbish. But I don't know <laughs> how they came to the conclusion that he doesn't like the army. Where some of my best friends are in the army, and I go to see them from time to time. So, but the point is, the I is knew they were <laughs> getting close. Now, this is what we have seen. We should have learned that if these guys would ignore the fact that there is an Air Force base in the Kao stroke Mando area. There is uh, one diff, mm. and they still went ahead to kidnap those forestry students. Mm. Afaka. Yes, because those boys, those children, I mean, those students, their, their school is adjacent and they, before our eyes, they took them away. So, and the airport too, you know, they've been attacking the uh, airport quarters and all that. They are all in the same location. If they can get away with that, it should have been a warning to us that there are bandits lurking around that area and we should have protected the NDA. There is no excuse for this, uh, for, for this kind of occurrence. As we are by now, heads will be rolling. Honestly. But our president is not one who allows heads to roll. People will do things that they don't deserve to keep their jobs. He, he, will he, he will leave them there. He will leave them there. to hear from him on ah. this. Of course, the president has said it won't uh, uh, <laughs> our <laughs> resolve to defeat banditry. You know, that is the statement. For me, I'm not even interested in what he says. It is what he does. It is what I see the people that he has appointed do. 
that matters more to, to me. Rhetorics amount to nothing. Let people see that, look, you've taken concrete steps. Now the chief of uh, defense staff is going around trying to get the support of retired soldiers. A lot of them were retired even when they still had a lot to offer their nation. So, and they, they still have what it takes. So it's a good thing that is going to seek their support. And interestingly, he met some of the people that were with him when he was a theater commander of Operation Lafayette Dole in the, at the meeting. Because some of these people look at you, because when you bring in a new chief of army staff, for example, and you say, oh, cost 36, cost this thing, all of you uh, go to the army resettlement uh, center so that Nigerians would, would not know that there is an attempt at mass mass um, what do they call it mass um, mm. retirement mm. go to the army resettlement center this and that, that from there there will be eased out quietly yes we have young people who still have a lot to offer their nation so irabon needs to continue to use such people they can offer valuable advice they are still useful mm. after investing now today when you look at the the attack and the way they took one other soldier. We don't know the fate. Earlier, it was rumored today that yeah. it's no more. It's no more. But it was as at now, yeah. there's no official. We can't no say or confirm officially. Even his now, family have not confirmed. When somebody was even telling me that they were asking for 200 million, I said, What F on tree? Carrying the. the uh, well, well, we have to I admit, uh, we have to, I have to salute the courage of the Chief of Defense Staff for admitting that such a thing would never have happened without inside collaboration. He ac admitted it is uh, unusual for a Nigerian general to admit that. Having said that, I also like to say that uh, it's unfortunate that this is the very first time in the history of Nigeria where a general is the president or head of state that we are facing this kind of security problem in this country. It has never happened since 1960. And it is unfortunate that it is happening without a whimper of, of action on the side of the presidency, mm. or those people, somebody was supposed to have, uh, you know, the way he ran out, Masasine, out of Kano in 1980. You cannot compare that now. He has a lot of things on his hand. He has everything that he can use. They have bought it. You see, I have always been telling people that it's not a question of how many that you bought that matter. It is the willingness, either the political willingness or willingness of the leadership to actually fight this problem. It shows that the Nigerian army is thoroughly compromised. It is compromised that if you can go to the NDA and spend, private, even if it is 15 minutes that is spent in NDA, it is, a, it is a, an indication that the Nigerian military is seriously ailing and that necessary steps has to be taken. Yeah, it was good that the man said uh, he has requested for the help of the retired generals. But what they are going to say does not matter much if they are going to translate their advice. Because like uh, General Basso said, uh, advice is a tank thankless job. Are they going to use their advice? Because I believe sincerely that no living Nigerian general will be happy about what is happening in Nigeria today. It appears those people actually ridiculed the Nigerian army or the Nigerian armed forces. And I think at this point in time, you know, like uh, I used to say that uh, if the river is carrying big trees, the smaller, smaller trees should take, should be where, because it, can, it will even uproot them. So I think time has come for us for the for the leadership of Nigeria, for the presidency, for the leadership of armed forces, to do something drastic, not issuing statement or making declaration. This is a time for decisive action to stop this thing. You know, some people will argue that the response of the government so far has been kind of laid back and docile, because mm. some people will even tell you that, look at the young, young um, children that they've kidnapped, and some of them, they are dying in detention, under this guys, the unfavorable um, atmosphere in which they've been abducted and the kind of how do they feed them, bandits that the only thing they feed on will be drugs or anything, these children, and they've been there for several weeks and nobody is still talking about them. Yeah, the I like having a free reign. I, I just want to say something quickly. President Buhari was not the one who ran Masasine out of Kano. He was not in charge. He was not the GOC. He was not the commander. He, he was the GOC 
third division in Jos, which was not Kano was not under his purview. The, um, the officer who led the operation to defeat Maitasine was IBB's former defense I, I chief. That's um, no the uh, intelligence chief, the one who spoke recently, uh, the Kano man. Um, under the command of Y.Y. Kure. General Kure. General Y.Y. Kure was the... Justice. Yeah, General Y.Y. Kure was the brigade commander in Kano. And at that time, um, Aliru Akilu okay. was the Should officer who led the operation to defeat um, Maitasine. It's part of what people say that we historians are sometimes bothered about. President Buhari never ran um, Maitasine out of town. It was Y.Y. Kure, who was the brigade commander in Kano, and um, um, Colonel, Halilu. Colonel Halilu Akilu led the operation. And he killed, uh, he killed Maitasine at that time. 1980 um, was the day that it happened. And was the year in which it happened. So, but talking about these bandits, I also read the story that um, about six of those children who were kidnapped in Tegina are now dead. It's um, unfortunate that government has abdicated this responsibility. Yes, it's a good decision to say you are not going to pay bandits anymore. In any case, you are the ones who tempted them with money when you are paying huge sums. By doing that, you made banditry a lot more lucrative uh, to, to, to these people. Now, they began to target school children because they know that they, whenever they pick up to, uh, school children, it will draw uh, the necessary publicity and all that, and government's attention will be drawn to them. Mm -hmm. Government now saw that ah, we can't continue paying this ransom. But well, now they've they've left everything to parents. Parents are selling their houses in the bid to Running get their children time. released from bondage. You saw the Greenfield uh, University. Yes. Uh, yes, they paid more than a hundred million yes. to bandits. Um, the Bethel uh, Baptist uh, uh, parents of the Bethel Baptist uh, uh, students who are also. Uh, being held by bandits, they are paying and the bandits are releasing them piecemeal. Today they release 10, mm. tomorrow they will release 15. Just they, doing are doing they, they, like. Like. they are doing they what they like. They are doing what they like. They are using telephone. Yes. They are using telephone. Yes. Look, 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 there is a person, and I've been warning that, look, the Buari area, law school, the university in Abuja, in the, the yes. university, there is no protection. I've been saying it. Somebody was uh, kidnapped in that area. And you know what? The bandits not only collected 5 million ransom, they also forced him to buy recharge card. <laughs> he, he had to buy a recharge card of about 20,000 for them. So it means they are using our telephone, telephone and uh, system. So it's not as if now they are communicating. We can't, we can't block their lines. We can't stop them from using the phones to, uh, to, to try to get ransom. Apart from that, they also told them to, uh, they told the guy to bring a carton of milk, a carton of malt, <laughs> and, uh, uh, right. and uh, um, a crate of beer, hero beer. Specifically, it was the beer that they said they should bring. So bandits will sit in their bush drinking beer, while people are agonizing, people are dying. As if, as if they, as if they, as if they are a government or no, yeah, no, no, I won't be surprised no, 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 if, if a bandit behaves like Louis the Sixteen, yes. who said, "Let's start some more." I am the state. Yes, some people are even, some point. people are even now saying that if these people decide to come together and start taking territories like the the, the Taliban, yeah, one by one, they have the capacity. Or the uh, they have the capacity. Or the Janjaweed in uh, in uh, Sudan. I don't understand. Start overrunning because what they've shown, they've shown capacity. No. They've shown everything now. Are your are your in in Zamfara as we speak, bandits are occupying some villages 
after chasing people away, that they've turned the villages to their own. They are occupying the villages exactly. now. So it's looking more like what Boko Haram used to do. Boko Haram will take over a community, stay there. Bandits are too are taking over villages in Zamfara State. The same thing the governor of Castina State is saying that 10 local governments out of its own local government. Now constantly. They're constantly they're under, under siege. Of, uh, we, are, we are powerless. As if we are powerless to deal with these people. And we know where they are. I don't know how the giant of Africa will yeah, now, uh, 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 bandits will now become the scourge of the, of the uh, giant the of, Africa. of Africa. Yes. Some scoundrels, some dirty scoundrels hmm. have now become the scourge of a great nation. I saw, I saw one Pascal video now, all of them with uh, automatic weapons and everything. These young guys, 16, 17, 18, 20, maximum. Yes. And they were all doing show of force and they were all brandishing well, whatever they, they had. recruiting people. They are recruiting people. Small boys. The kind of money at their disposal, they can buy some of the best automatic weapons yes, that are not even available to the army. They can buy. That's why they are confident. I feel not seen uh, where a bandit was boasting that, look, I don't fear your army. It's only God that I fear. I would not have come to attend this peace meeting. That have you not tried for so long to kill me? A bandit. And the police commissioner was sitting well, yeah. there representing the IG. And he was boasting in Hausa. He said, if not because of God, because he knows he will die one day, I would not have attended this <laughs> peace meeting and there's nothing you can do to me. He was boasting. <laughs> I have Charles. Charles is calling us from Lagos. Thank you for joining us, Charles. Uh, good, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Charles. Uh, uh, a question one will ask, uh, do, we, do we still have, so it's, it's a particular charge in Nigeria. Sorry? These bandits that are moving everywhere, we know where, the, the military know where they are. Don't you have, what, what, is, the, what is the role of the satellite, satellite to have in Abuja? Good. This is what they are not hiding under the cave. They are just yeah. inside the bush. Do, we have the drones that can locate the You are even going too I mean, far. We don't need satellite. I mean, we know where they are. Without satellite, I'm, we know I'm, where I'm, they, they are. Americans, they are Americans moved in here just for a single uh, individual. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this Took that guy out and, and left. Yes, now. They made the, they did the operation was so swift. See, the question I want to ask, the same military we have in Nigeria, are there not the same people that went to, to the southeast and were able to fight the so-called unknown government? <laughs> And the fight where they are in all the bushes in the whole of uh, the southeast. Why can't they do the same in the north? Oh, Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. You know, a lot of people we allude to so many things because of, you know, the seeming incapacity mm, of. I don't know. The federal government to do something about it. And about on the final notes, these students cannot go to school in the north. Yes. Even Kaduna State, say to further notice, especially Ustes, to further notice that the school system is like that. And everything. can we continue like this? Well, obviously we cannot continue like this. I think uh, we are just moving gradually to a people's revolution. It will happen. People say it's, it's not possible, but look, people cannot go to the farm. When they go to the farm, especially in Niger State, they know where they know they know where they are going to harvest, and they go and kidnap their wives mm -hmm. and ask them to bring the money. They have made and they give it to bandits and bandits or uh, terrorists or do what do they call them? They use, the it, farm again. they use it to, 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 to get to better them. weapons and they also pay tax to these people. So they have constituted a government in itself. <laughs> so they are in, in the government until we collect tax realize. now. If bandits collect tax now, mm -hmm. do they, I want tax. to go and re read so, the, the indices for a failed state. No, they'll tell you, I want to go and read it again and tell you, to understand. Um, <laughs> for you to have access to your farm, this is how much you will pay. Sometimes they will write letters to those, those communities and say, we are coming. If you don't want us to come and deal decisively with you, pay so, so, so amount of money. And if you don't pay, we are coming. So the people know what will happen because they will not just kill people, they will set their houses ablaze. So the people will rather pay them. It is in places like Kebi that they stood out to them and they, they slaughter many people in one day. One underlying factor is that there will be breakdown of law and order. So if we have we are having this kind of breakdown of law and order. We are gradually drifting into a failed state. That's the reality on ground. We'll take this break or we'll come back. We'll discuss more. It's still journalist tangas. We'll be right back after this time out.
So, journalist, thank God, reaching you live from TVC News, and I have Baba Jide Kolade Otitoju and Tune Abato still in the studio. From Kaduna, we take you down to Joss. The endless killings in Plateau states continued unabated. On Tuesday night, gunmen killed about 36 persons and injured several others in a fresh attack in Naragota community in just North local government area. The government stormed the community with sophisticated weapons about around 10 p.m., killing the victims and injuring several others who were rushed to the Bingham University Teaching Hospital just for treatment. One thing that is happening now, state governors, they've started evacuating their yes, um, like indigenous any, any good state from for your state. Kogi State, okay, yes. from University of Joss, mm -hmm. because of the what we spoke about last week, and they expect this reprisal, and this reprisal might go on and on and on, and it might just lead to total anarchy in Plateau Joss. This is not Kaduna again. Now, coming to North Central. It's, a, it's really shameful what is happening. You know, these killings, as I said last week, had been going on for weeks. More than 100 people had been killed before the attack on those travelers. And no effort was made to stop these killings. Now, we've seen gunmen go to a community, destroy the bridge, linking the community with the outside world, so that it will be difficult for um, the army to come and save the people. So by the time they, they vandalized the bridge, they, they, they started killing people, moving from house to house and burn, burning their houses. It is really, really um, shameful that we are allowing this to happen. It's really, really shameful. Just has become a place where Christians and Muslims find it extremely difficult to cohabit since 2001, 2010, all of those killings. The people have found a way to live separately. Mm. Today, Muslims would rather live in Bauchi Road, Bauchi Road mm -hmm. and Guanrogo and part of Terminus, Zololo Junction, Dogon Karufe, Gangare, and entire. If you are a Muslim, and you are looking for house, they will suggest those places to you. Christians would rather live in Abatoa, Tudungwada, Millionaire's Quarters, Old Airport Road, Genta, and Guan Rukuba, Rukuba Road, and Gadabu. But for the Christians and Muslims, they cohabit peacefully in Refit. Refit is their own Victoria easy. Island. Uh, that's uh, GRA. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's yeah. their own. That's that's GRA. GRA. So yeah. then uh, Bukuru and the, the federal and state locals, they've never had to fight in, in, in those areas yes. <laughs> because the it's close to the government house mm. and uh, the place is well uh, defended. So, you know, in Kaduna, we had a similar thing whereby no Christian wants to live South. in Tudunwada. Anything after that bridge, that uh, bridge over River Kaduna, mm. wants to leave Junction Road. That's where Christians like to live in. They don't want to live anywhere else. And once it's six o'clock, everybody starts going to that area. It just it reminds one of uh, Lebanon of those days. Mm. You know, uh, Lebanon divided into uh, an area where Christians live peacefully, Muslims live you know so that's what we have in a, in a, a just some communities are no go areas for christians some are no go areas for for muslims i believe that there must be a genuine effort by leaders community leaders across board facilitated by the government to end the cycle of killings in that state because years of deep animosity to one another is what we are seeing any little 
combustion, people will start, they start killing themselves. Any little argument, they start killing themselves. So this is what we are seeing. At a point, we were always, um, uh, this place was always in the news, Riyom. Mm. And bar back in Lad, mm. you know, mm. they were always in the news. But now it's no longer Riyom. It is the Miangu area, Jebu Miangu area, uh, Basa local government, where killings are happening. Now, the governor has uh, uh, reintroduced the curfew. But the problem is, these curfews, it is even during curfews that people get killed the most. Mm -hmm. Because What's some people coming from uh, from uh, maybe outside just they are not aware that there is a uh, curfew in place and then they get attacked you say there is curfew and these tribal warlords they will set up uh, checkpoints you allow them to set up roadblocks in their own uh, dominated areas where if anybody is unlucky so and falls into their, hands, into their hands that person gets uh, gets killed so when are we going to stop all this when will this killing stop the governor should know that he has a job to do otherwise history will be harsh on him since these killings began has he gone to any of those um, um, the, the front lines has he gone there to even see the extent of damage and even promise restitution of any kind has he done that because that is the first step to which the, to calm in the tension. Mm. You then tell them, look, you are coming up with relief materials, this and that. That's the first step. And you promise also that, look, perpetrators will be punished. But where the government is silent mm. about its resolve to pro punish uh, perpetrators, you refuse to go to where the killings took place. The people will think that you don't care. And they too will want to retaliate. And the, but the, the cycle of retaliation will not stop. This is what we are facing. And we've had panels, commission of inquiry set up about this just plateau. Mm. But the, 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 uh, their findings and their recommendations are never implemented. So well, how are we going to solve the problem? Papa okay. Bola, Bola, uh, Jibola headed the panel, I remember. Mm. Like now, what did we do about his findings? Now, justice, but the crisis in just now is peculiar because uh, this is like an ethno-religious uh, something yes. so on one hand you have the panche uh, the lantern the angas the people the people run the christian dominated area and the outside full and dominated areas and for a long time that dichotomy has been a big problem well uh, well i think uh, over the years because up to the late 80s or even early 90s just it used to be the most peaceful, ah. probably most peaceful state in Nigeria. Yes. The so weather is okay. Mm -hmm. You see foreigners yes. there. You so see people on, on a Sunday morning when you go to there are some areas you go to it just you will think you are in Obomosho or some other area mm. because people yeah. are missing freely. Mm. But that war has been consistently destroyed. Nasarawa Baptist. Nasarawa, especially with the, with the military government, with the creation of local governments, I think that was the beginning, the most causes of the problem. Now when mm. people, some people think that they have settled there for 50 years and the owners of the land want to kick. So I think the, the really problem, uh, problem is that we don't have leaders that are willing to go to the, like he said, those in government are not ready to go to the fundamentals of the problem. What is the source of the problem? And let's begin to solve it. Because when you begin, there was a day somebody asked me, well, how many people are even in Bonu State that people are still there? They are still getting to kid. And look at Joss. With all the we, we, peace in that particular time, it has been permanently destroyed. And to take an ninja to rule Nigeria again, it should take about 20 years to restore confidence in Nigeria. Because people were in a town that you have everybody there, mm. when you are in just, you have the yes. princess, you have Muslims, no, you have Muslims, so you have everybody. People are not divided. And your major used to live in just. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So we are so divided over the years, and it is because government is allowing the, the government last three, four years, years it has so been so divided. We have never been country. divided like this as a country. So I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's unfortunate that uh, the, we are not showing leadership. Those who are in power are not showing leadership. And this is a democratic government that was voted in. The first condition of any body of humanity is, is, is security. When there is no security, if you like, invest anywhere. Anyway, tell me any investor that will come to a country where they keep people in their thousands every day. No, every every day. Day. The, the, the traditional rulers, the mm. thought thief, the, um, the, you know, the, they, they have lost touch. You know, their traditional rulers, they should be able to rally around their people and, you know, what solve this problem. Now, it might not, the federal government might not have the solution to this problem. But the people in just the major stakeholders, should be able to come together and say, we want to, we want to cause this crisis. 
Yes, the traditional rulers need to they need to come together. Um, the religious leaders. Mm. Uh, it seems even religious leaders are becoming far more influential now than even some traditional rulers. Religious mm. leaders have a role to play. Um, the at every level, whether you are Yoruba or uh, Birom or uh, Miangu person, they all have they have leaders. At all levels, we must find a way to organize a kind of um, stakeholders conference. I've mm -hmm. seen where it worked. It worked in uh, Mambila. They were killing themselves. Hmm. But later on, they That's called this too. they called the stakeholders uh, meeting, and they told themselves, that, "Look, what was what's going on with us? We have lived together for." Donkey years. Yes. We never kill one another. Why are we killing one another over land that is enough for everybody? You know how big the Taraba is. Taraba mm. is the third largest state in Nigeria, and the the Mambila area is so vast. So why are you fighting over land? I mean, it's meaningless. After that meeting, there has not been any attack. Mm. Whereas there was a time that. Mambila was in the news uh, for, for those killings. After that, no more. So it's possible where the people have resolved to stop fighting. Where the leaders come together, but government has to lead the way. And in leading the way, there must be even-handedness. The people have to see clearly that the government is not biased. The government is not supporting any party. The government is committed to peace. The government will then champion the process, get everyone on board, and extract commitment from everyone. Every party. If we are unable to extract commitment from people that they will stop killing themselves, even if you put a million soldiers in that mm. place, it's, it's, they, they will still kill people. people. They and understand they the area more than yeah, the soldiers. The they will sneak in. They come from the mountains. They will sneak in and yes, kill people. And Look at what the soldiers were saying that when they rules. could not enter, they had to go to some villages to get to that location. Mm. By that time, the birds had flown. These killers had already done their worst and they have left. So okay, I they, have the people must commit to peace. Thank you for staying with us. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. From yeah, Billing Kabi. My regards to everybody in the studio, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead with the continuation. Yeah, I, I simply want to congrats you for having this opportunity to be educating Nigeria mm. and delivering it because a lot of people are studying you carefully. Yes. Uh, sir, I want to make contribution. I'm sorry for taking you back. Go ahead. Uh, about this attack on NDA. Believe me, yes, uh, sincerely, anybody that is a right thinking person in his normal senses will be seriously disturbed about what really happened in NDA. This is an army which is being feared by enemies, respected by allies, and that believed by the citizens. Look at just what happened to us. This is a national effort, as Babadine has rightly said. And we hope the authorities will take action so that this kind of thing never happen in the history of Nigeria. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, the crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is deepening. Two contenders have emerged for the acting chairmanship seats of the main opposition party a day after a River State High Court restrained and battled Uche Secondos from parading himself as chairman. The two contenders, Yemi Akiwomi, who is the deputy national chairman South, and Suleiman Nazil, the deputy national chairman North, are claiming to be the acting PDP, PDP acting national chairman. <laughs> Jide, this is like a deja vu of what happened. <laughs> no, we it's, said it yesterday. It's, it's a re being replayed. <laughs> we said it yesterday, and everything is just going the same script. Yes, yes. The same way. <laughs> it's the same. It is what we anticipated that they are beginning to do. Now, I won't be surprised if Wike, the governor of um, River State, gets Sekondusi's word 
to to mm. to, to suspend mm. the river it. states. Yes, yes. yes. Guess they, the water they they suspended it, yes. because it would want to deny him of any base. And look, if you want to a join somebody. a party, you join through your word. Yes. Now they want to kick you out of a party too. They start the from your word. Your word. Uh -huh. And if they start from your word, then the national body has to also ratify. But with the courts already uh, telling him not to parade himself as chairman, mm. not to attend the meetings, mm. how are we sure that if those guys go ahead to ratify, I mean to suspend, the national body will say, no, you can't suspend. So it is clear that the people who want to kick uh, Secundus out of the party, they are not relenting. And they will use every trick in the book. Mm. I was thinking that Secundus will become the first PDP national so chairman to complete his term. <laughs> but from the look of things, we can who is the arrowhead of the Secundus must go mm -hmm. uh, campaign acquire does not even want him to complete his term and it's just if he, if he will be patient it's less than two months mm -hmm. you know for the man to go since you have already set convention for for october it's i think he has a problem that months. Secundus is still in that position again to request. yes and he doesn't want him he doesn't want him to preside over the neck mm. You know, because the neck is a very strong organ of the party. And it's at the neck meeting that those who organize the uh, election, the election and convention uh, uh, yes, the, uh, the electoral committee especially, mm. that's where they will be nominated. And with him presiding, with him in charge, it is very, very likely that the, that the people who emerge will be people who are loyal to the chairman. And he doesn't want that to happen. He wants to get him out of the way. I don't know what he did to offend him. I don't know what game is, um, uh, we, we is playing. But he appears to have made up his mind that he doesn't want this man again. He brought him. He got everybody on board. Mm, he uh, sold him to the world. And because it was the southwest, uh, the southwest uh, PDP guys, the body judges of this world, mm. the this they were the one routine for, for the southwest position chairman. before mm. saying that the position has never gone to southwest. To southwest yes, yes. Mm. And, and they wanted the, the that. Uh, uh, and one other professor from Ikiti State, I've forgotten his name. Uh, uh, professor Adeniro. Uh, mm. mm. So they were all. He was the one who came out. shouted that. Uh, yes. uh, uh, the south south had been. Um, carrying the burden the of the party, the party they've the party. been loyal yes. to the party. That why should they not be rewarded for their loyalty and all that? So he so brought that argument in, mm. and uh, no. he intimidated no. everybody. Yes, in the end, when we go to that convention, the southwest um, chairmanship candidate one by one they started stepping down, stepping down, stepping down to so, um, the emergence of Uche Secondus. Three years down the line today, yeah. look at what is happening. You don't want to see him again. Mm. <laughs> well, I think uh, what is happening in PDP is very unfortunate for Nigeria. Unfortunate in the sense that at a time when the APC is fumbling at the national level, they cannot put, uh, organize a good security for the country. The economy is wobbling. The economy is seriously bad. Then the main opposition party that one would have expected that will to, yes, state, consolidate that will, to consolidate on that particular thing and give a serious challenge to the government mm. is itself turned into two, or probably to even three, but because by the time they go into convention, you will see many tendencies in the party now. So it is unfortunate for Nigeria, and this is a reflection of the political class we have in Nigeria today, that Nigeria's political class today, they have no focus, they have no vision, and they don't have the people at heart. Because if they really have the people, okay, you can imagine what happened between 1979 and 1983. You know you had an opposition in the UPN there, mm -hmm. you had a party there, but this one, most of those people who in PDP today, you'll be surprised that before that convention, they will jump ship into the APC. Most of the governors in PDP who are serving second term, they have already the camp to the uh, mm. to the APC. Mm. So you, how, how do we how do we begin to solve the problem of Nigeria where the main opposition party have a problem with itself? Mm. They are not organized. What 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 alternative do we have and those to small, the small, party? Those small, small, smaller parties, parties. they are good as uh, death. They are yeah, not because strong. because in Nigeria today, you know, when you don't hold the cash, the cash cow, you don't control when you don't control government, you can never 
change the government and yes. you cannot see elections. All of them it is public funds that they use. Public funds that they are using. Fund they are not using anybody's funds. funds. So that's why I say it is very unfortunate for Nigeria as a country that a party but that supports. That account for the, their so called strength. Yeah, yeah. They move, they move uh, part of their so called security vote that nobody audits. Or this did. They that's move what they it into running a party. Into the party. So they pay. Uh, that's why they, it's they don't for spend them to pick their money. As they don't spend their own money like that. It that's why it's easy for them to pick anybody as chairman. They find comfortable to spend. They don't like spending their own money. So they don't it is, like it. It's unfortunate that PDP is going through this thing, and uh, it is a bad domain for Nigerian politics. So Uche Secondus now effectively cannot parade himself as, as chairman. As, chairman oh, because as, 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 as so long as he has not vacated that court order, okay. uh, that injunction. Now, the wisdom now would now say, okay, since Uche Secondu is, is from the South South, mm. some people will say, okay, the Deputy National Chairman, chairman South, South. Mm. should, you know, it should take over. But the way the hierarchy, the way the structure is, <laughs> is that even the, not, the, the position of the Deputy National Chairman, even mm. not, is. <laughs> no, it's not, it's by delay. Mm. The, the Deputy. Mm. National Chairman uh, South, South oh. should mm. be the one to take over. Hmm. That's so the way it should be. Who is sponsoring this? Who will remember? Even if you remember, even when Shomole uh, had this problem. Yes, it was um, Abiola Jumobi. Yes, but he was, 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 was ill. Mm. If yes. he had not so been ill, he would have uh, taken yes. over. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And okay. then Hilly had Eta came out too. Okay. To lay claim to the from uh, to the, the from chairmanship, the yes, well, also from south. But, but, but I think mm. by tomorrow, no. information that tomorrow the uh, chairman of the PDB governors forum, governor of uh, Shokuto State, mm. Tambua, mm. there are someone in a meeting in Abuja for tomorrow among all the uh, governors forum. Okay. Maybe that to find the way of the crisis. He just did that, that, that this afternoon. Okay, so, so many meeting for to tomorrow in Abuja to find a way to, to solve that because they have, mm. have they have to find a way. Two months they cannot do that. The, the party cannot do that leadership for two months between now and October. Something has to happen. At they the time when they are preparing for convention. For convention, so two months. Let us hope that by tomorrow, Tambua and Co will be able to reconcile all the differences within the PDP mm. and present either of the two, either chairman, deputy chairman, South or deputy chairman North. But like he said. It is not reasonable for Deputy Chairman of North to want to take that position from mm. second dose, if no. it is vacant. Mm. It is not reasonable. And so there has to it, be it's, not, it's not as if the People's Democratic Party, is, uh, uh, the All Progressive Congress, is immune to this crisis. No, no, no. It's not as if no, no, they are managing it. They are managing it. It could snowball at any time. They are managing it. They are two by two. They are going to come out. out. No, the house is even of bigger dimension. It's going to be bigger. There are many people in the PDP who are waiting to see. How, How the, the PDC, APC, will APC will organize, will organize the convention? Uh, that different, is different tendencies within the party. Within the party. That is if they don't find the political solution to the potential banana peel hmm. uh, represented by Mr. Malabune, Caretaker Committee. If they can find the political solution, uh, then fine. But there are many people in the APC who are convinced that. It is dangerous to keep uh, the caretaker committee, committee in, in office, office they the because, <laughs> because they, they could lose. Uh, <laughs> they could lose in court, and if they lose in court, it will be a total loss for everyone. Hmm. So that's why I said their own is even potentially more hmm. dangerous. But you see, politicians in Nigeria also have a way of precipitating crisis in rival parties. Yeah. So mm. there are people who, who now in the APC will be doing their best to make sure that these people can't resolve their crisis. their crisis. So if they can't resolve their crisis, how are they going to constitute any significant threat to the, the APC? APC? So their own uh, strategy now will be let them not be able to resolve this. No, let um, secondus not be able to come back so that if secondus doesn't come back, the the prospect for stability mm. will be will be gone. Like what happened to the PDP in Lagos State? They have never, at any point in time. Mm. They have never been won. Yes. 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 It's not since 1999. It's not their, it's not their <laughs> making. <laughs> there are people to. <laughs> there are people who make sure that they don't. Even in that party. It's happening now. Most towards the election, you just see somebody in the campaign for the PDP. All right, just before we go. Let's wish the 
coordinator of the National Youth Service Corps, NYC, in Lagos State, Eddie Chiredu Megwa. A happy birthday. The state coordinator is a year older today. Jide? Yeah, uh, good man, uh, alumnus of the University of Ilone. Good man, gentleman, and uh, very, very dutiful. And he does his job with tremendous zeal. Uh, he's a man that has a bright future. Hmm. So we want to wish the um, Lagos State NYC coordinator, that uh, Mr. Eddie Chinezu Megua, a happy birthday from uh, the journalist I got here. Happy birthday to you. Many more. You should, you should be years. Many years. more years. Yeah. So, Tunde in a, in a happy Nigeria. Nigeria. Hmm? I said many more years in a happy Nigeria. Yes, in a happy Nigeria. <laughs> in Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes, because yeah. that's what we are wishing him, yeah. also wishing ourselves. I'm telling you, because <laughs> if Nigeria is not moving forward, there's not how you can be happy. You can not be happy here. That's the thing. Hmm. All right. Happy here. Tunde Abato, thank you for it's your contribution to yeah. Thank you. And the best for himself, Babaji Dekola, thank you. Thank you for always being there. And that's our package today.